Good afternoon, this is Mr. Riley, and I'll be giving you an example of Lab 3 for uh, CIST 1601. This is Part 2. Okay, so we're going to configure Wireshark and generate network traffic. So, make sure you read this, uh, the gray area, the notes. It helps you put it into context. Just for brevity, I'm going to go ahead and just read the instructions from the V Workstation Desktop Launch uh, Putty application. So, okay, and then we're going to for the host name or IP address, we're going to put STA one dot secure labs on demand dot local okay login as sta1 that's one not an l and then when you type in the password doesn't give you any feedback but other than you know if you do get an error message you didn't type it in but it doesn't show you as you're typing it so if you received a warning that the container has stopped you will need to reset the lab to reset the lab option so at the command prompt execute the file IW list sta1 dot wlan zero scan okay I'm gonna try something here Change settings, appearance, change font. I'm going to make it larger. Okay, hopefully that makes that a little bit more clear for you. Okay. Your scan should have detected one of the wireless network broadcasting on channel one. So, right up here, you see cell with that MAC address, channel 1, what frequency, 2.4 gigahertz, channel 1, signal level, real good, 70 by 70, encryption key off, extended service stead, secure labs, Wi-Fi, then it shows the bit rate, master, and all that. Okay. Secure Labs Wi-Fi, the SSID, short for Service Set Identifier, is the friendly network name that you typically use when browsing for available Wi-Fi networks. Pay attention to the, to the encryption key parameters, which is currently set to off. This parameter specific for WEP encryption indicates that WEP encryption is not configured on this device. The access point has just identified, uh, serves as a WLAN and connects to the following devices and it connects to <clears throat> wireless access point 172.20.0.254 wireless station 1, 2, and 3 Okay. AP1 represents a wireless access point with no encryption, which means that anyone can authenticate and establish a complete unencrypted connection with Station 2 and 3 are both currently connected to AP1. While Station 1, the station you are currently connected, is the broadcast the range but not attached to the network. In the next ex steps, you will execute a script that initiates a Wireshark, Wireshark capture 
on the WLAN for the V workstation for the purpose of this lab. So we're going to go ahead and minimize this. And then um, on the V station desktop launch, Wireshark Remote VBS. That's that little script there. Okay. So it's capturing right now. Broadcast traffic 802, the protocol is 802.11, which is the Wi Fi protocol. The length of the packets, and that's a beacon. And you'll get beacons that send out. So for the purpose of this lab, Assume that the capture is being performed by placing a V Workstation wireless network interface card in monitor mode, which is also known as promiscuous mode, <clears throat> which allows the interface to inspect and capture packets from the network if it is it is not even associated with. Monitor mode can be contrasted with managed mode when the wireless NIC only accepts traffic from its default gateway router. I'm going to let you guys finish reading that. So we're going to minimize Wireshark and restore the there to review the station's current wireless configuration. So we're going to type in that command if w config no wireless extensions, station one, WLAN, ESSID off, any mode access not associated. Okay. At the command prompt, go ahead and execute the following command W I W C O N F I G. STA one dash WLAN zero ESSID secure labs dash Wi Fi. Now this is case sensitive, so the W is cap and the F is cap, okay? So now we are connected to the uh, secure labs Wi-Fi at the command prompt execute. Now the if config was actually two commands ago. I'm just going to do arrow up, and you should see it there. So now mode manage access point frequency, and now we're connected to it. Note that the command output appears that you should see that the station one interface is now associated with that extended service set, Secure Labs Wi Fi. You should also see that the broadcast frequency for the access point right there, broadcast frequency is with access point, which is the MAC address of the access point. If you do not see the output described above, reissue the the W config command if you're still not associated. So I'm going to do this. This is always nice, helps make things well. Actually, I'll see it. So do a screenshot of that. Okay, note the next step it will generate traffic in the Secure Labs Wi Fi station at the command prompt uh, issue. ping dash C four one seven two dot two zero dot zero dot two okay so the dash C 
four means count of four. If you didn't put that in, it would just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. At the command prompt, type in curl http colon slash slash 172.20.0.254. Okay. And what this shows here is the website you would go to. This is actually HTML. Okay. Minimize station one. In the next step, you will access the management graphical user interface for the AP1 access point to configure AP1 to use WPA2 PSK encryption. As you saw earlier, wireless security is disabled for AP1 access point, which means all traffic is being transferred unencrypted. Plain text that can easily be retrieved later. So, open Firefox. And for the address, we will type in ap1.labs.demand.local. Okay. Navigate to the wireless page, and you'll see right here, overview, status, wireless. Okay. Under the wireless security settings header, change the security mode to security mode, WPA2 PSK, passphrase, strong password. Management GUI will briefly refresh and then return to the make a screenshot showing the updated security mode. So apply changes. Okay, then do a screenshot of that. Okay, now go ahead and close the, when you apply the changes, any clients connected to the AP1 access point will be kicked off in the next, or disconnected. In the next step, you will reconnect uh, station one to the AP1, but this time you will need to use the WPA2 paraphrase. So let us close that. Okay, restore, okay, do the changes encryption, standards like WPA2, IW config only support open and web configurations when connecting to WPA2 enabled networks. From a Linux shell, you must use the WPA supplicant, a Linux command line WPA client 802.11i supplicant. Basically, a program for making a login request to a WS, a wireless supported network. Wireless supplicants will actively maintain your connection in the background and can automatically re authenticate when disconnected. Much like uh, with the IW config and WEP, access to the WPA network through WPA supplicant is a two step process that you will follow in the next couple steps. Okay, so at the command prompt, type in WPA pass phrase secure labs Y. slash root slash wpa dot 
C O M F. Your cursor will be placed on a new blank line where the WPA will expect a password. So we type in S T R O N G P A S S W 0 R D, not 0 O. And now I'm in. WPA password take, uh, takes your console input into ASCII key and converts it to PSK. The PSK and SSID entries are then written into WPA config file, the appropriate format. Okay, so now we're at the command prompt. We're going to go ahead and execute WPA underscore sup. Dash B dash D. Oops, that was underscore dash D N one eight zero two one one dash I. Zero. Okay, what did I do wrong? Okay, I see what I did wrong. Okay. I'm going to go back to this, and that is not a 1. That's not an N18. That is an NL8. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, I'm going to try one more thing here. I'm going to type in Okay. Go to our old command and I think between station 1 and W land there is supposed to be no space. There we go. So, something to remember, the after the n it's that's an L and there's no space between station one and W land. Okay. Okay. And also you can also right mouse click this and open in a new tab and kind of get a better view of it. This process is also placed in the background of dash B that is that does not tie up your terminal. It's common for WPA supplements supplicants was designed to run as a daemon or a service. Managing your wireless connection from the background, the dash D option specifies the wireless drivers to use. And that's where we had NL80211. So, okay, moving on. Now we're going to run the command. I'm going to run the clear command just to kind of clear up the thing. Okay, now we're going to run IWCON. F I G S T A one dash W land zero mode frequency manage access point powered you try encryption off
a screenshot of that. Okay, now let's run the command uh, curl. Curl HTTP colon slash slash 172.20.0.25. And that's the website and that will generate uh, HTTP traffic so now it just tells us to close the uh, close the putty close the terminal window restore the wire shark and end the capture so we're going to capture stop In the capture session and say save copy to the V workstation. So desktop. And we're gonna call it in my case. Riley Wi-Fi Capture. Okay. Okay, now moving on to the next section. I'm gonna close Wireshark for now and that's my Wi-Fi capture. I saved to my desktop. Okay, part two of section two. In this part of the lab, you'll use Wireshark to review the packets you have generated in the Secure Labs Wi-Fi plan. As in part one, you conduct your analysis. You will pay special attention to the, some of the unique features of packets transmitted over wireless networks that compare to wired networks. The first thing you should notice is that the packet list pane is an abundance of packets tagged as beacon frames. In this info column, WPA has the ability to advertise its presence as a wireless network. And that's how you guys see it, you know, on your wireless devices. So in the packet list pane, select any broadcast beacon. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and open up my capture here. In the packet list, select any broadcast beacon from Okay, pay attention to any of the new wireless stack in the packet details. So, radio tap, this field depends on uh, of the frame, radio tap, let me close that. radio tap, header. Pay attention to the new wireless stack in the uh, packet details pane, which consists of the four new protocols. Radio tap. This field depends on the driver for the wireless network in use and use for additional frame information. The MAC address, any flags you might have going on. And they use a different flag than like a regular one. They have a lot more flags. Radio information, 8021B, short preamble, data rate, one megabits per second, what channel, what frequency, and then the beacon frame. And these are broadcast, because you see the, the MAC address is all Fs. The wireless management data Close these so I have room. Fixed parameters and tag parameters. Okay. In the packet details pane, expand the 802.11 beacon frame and expand the frame control field. So let's go back up to that. Okay. 
there are three types of 802.11 frame types, management, control, and data frames. In this case, you see a management frame here. Management frames are used to manage the basic server set, server set, service set, which includes probing, associating, roaming, and disconnecting clients. Control frames are used to access the medium and acknowledge receipt, and finally, data frames transfer the data. So in the panel details, you expand the 802.11 wireless management row and expand the fixed parameters. fixed parameters, and you have your timestamp and beacon interval. And our beacon interval on this is every tenth of a second, approximately. Note that you should see beacon intervals at 100 milliseconds, as mentioned, you know, in the opening note. Okay, expand the tag perimeter row tag parameters row. Okay. Notice that the SSID parameter is set to the lab's wireless, so SSID, secure Wi-Fi. What rates it'll work at. Referring to the SSID, the SSID is just an identifier for the wireless network. In most cases, wireless networks are made up of multiple WAPs. Each WAP has its own MAC address, which is called a basic service set. All BSSIDs taken together represent a wireless network called an extended service set. This is generally simply referred to as an SSID. You should also notice that the DS parameter is set to the current channel of one. The frequencies allocated to wireless networks are segmented into smaller ranges called channels. Channels ex uh, exist to allow multiple wireless networks to exist, exist close to proximity. So we're going to go ahead and do a screen capture of that. Okay, in the <coughs> packet list pane, select the broadcast packet. Packet list pane, select broadcast packet, then right click the broadcast in the destination column and select apply as, apply as filter. Okay. So we're going to highlight one of the broadcast packets, apply as a filter, and not selected. From the time context menu, to filter out all broadcast packets. Okay, there we go. Okay. One of the interesting or potentially insecure features about wireless devices is that the way they attempt to transparently connect to known wireless networks. By default, anytime a device is not connected to a wireless network, it openly broadcasts the SSIDs of all previously associated networks in an attempt to connect to one of them. Then the broadcast messages probe the packets if any devices. Um, if a device sends a probe packet, receives an acknowledgement, attempts to connect to the wireless network. So, in the packet details pane, review a frame control field. 
I'm going to move this up. Okay, frame control field. Now you'll see in the control frame, recall that the control frame is used to access the medium and acknowledge receipt. So in the display, add, okay. And that filters out everything that are just ICMP packets. So these go to your ping request. See data frame, recall that this last type of 802 frame, the data frame is used to transfer information. So. Encapsulation, arrival time length. Okay, let's take a screenshot of that. Clear the current display filter and so by doing this. And add a new one that isolates related traffic of ATT process. No, you should notice the two sides of the ATT page show up both related to the first curl command. So to basically apply filter HTTP then enter and we have two of those we sent. Okay. Go ahead and do a screenshot of that. This way you can see your HTTP you sent. Clear the display filter and apply a new one that isolates to related to the EAPOL protocol. So clear that. EAPOL. So So let's look at the authentication here. I want to close up part of this. Okay, so key information, descriptor, we're using AES cipher with a SHA-1 message digest that's the that's the algorithms we're using for encryption for WPA note the AES cipher and the HMAC in the, at the top there are the cryptographic algorithms used for the message okay let's go ahead and do a screen
screen capture of that. And now we can close the Wireshark window. And that concludes section two of the lab. Let's move on to section three. Generate malicious traffic. To prepare a lab environment for section three, you will need to navigate to the C directory of the V workstation and launch section three WLAN command file. The script will automatically launch a Wireshark capture session on, the new, on a new WLAN topology. In this part of the lab, you will use two components of the Aircrack suite to simulate malicious uh, network traffic on WLAN. Aircrack NG is a collection of tools used to assess wireless security. In this exercise, we'll use the Air Dump NG module, Packet Sniffer, and Air Play NG module that is used to generate wireless traffic. Together, they will be used for tools to simulate malicious traffic on the network as security professionals. It is important to be able to identify signs of unusual and potentially malicious traffic, as well as attack attacks that may be associated with it. At the first step, you will open a new terminal. So, putty. The host will be sta1.securelabsondemand.local. Okay, sta1 and dass. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second. 